This week had its typical issues that a race weekend might present. I can't say any day except for maybe today went to plan. You know, six hours sitting in the emergency room with Dennis was definitely not part of the agenda. Weather's supposed to be nice from four to six, so like, if I were you guys, Thank you. you're welcome. Find like maybe a seat at the beer garden. All right, fellas, what are we doing today? You can explain it. I sound like <laughs> I sound like terrible right now. Welcome to Vital's 2022 Downhill Bike Test Session. We are back with another multi-bike test featuring four descent-hungry machines from Mondraker, Propane, Canefield, and Nukeproof. With gobs of travel, slack geometry, big rotors, and tiny gears, downhill bike performance has always been synonymous with race pedigree and success between the tape. Many brands invest endless resources in developing World Cup winning bikes that can navigate the most demanding terrain and withstand the abuse of the world's fastest racers. With racing so intertwined into the DNA of downhill, we figured what better way to test this year's bikes than in a race environment. To do so, we headed to Vernon, New Jersey, the home of Mountain Creek Bike Park and the site of round two of the 2022 US National Downhill Series. Situated only an hour from New York City, Mountain Creek has hosted multiple world-class events over the years. They are well known for their impressive variety of trails, featuring a mix of rough technical rock gardens, high-speed chunder, steep rock rolls, and flowy jump lines with ripping berms. With a short gondola ride that allows multiple runs to be knocked out per hour and accommodations conveniently located at the base, Mountain Creek served as the perfect location to conduct our test. In true test session fashion, we wrangled together four testers to gain a diverse impression of where each bike excels, fall short, and what nuances set them apart. And ultimately, our goal was to see which bike would emerge victorious on race day. Well, at least that was the plan when we arrived at Mountain Creek. So we're gonna be pumping our fists, not our gas. <laughs> what? <laughs> So yeah, today, uh, day one here at Vital DH test session, we have four bikes, four riders. Yeah, so we're just gonna do two runs on each bike, just swap some pedals around and uh, just kind of get a feel for which bike we want to race on. It should be a good way to like, probably do same trails on all bikes and then just uh, kind of get like those initial impressions and then hopefully we all get a gauge of which one we'll go the fastest on. And the, I know that some of us are gonna be like, no, we both want that bike. Yeah. And then we'll come up with the challenge later to figure out who. Yeah. Arm wrestle? <sighs> or push I'm going to get my last choice. I like push ups. <laughs> In case you're wondering who these two fine gentlemen are, you are looking at half of our four person test team. I'm Jason Schroeder, tech editor of Vital, and once upon a time World Cup racer turned desk jockey. I spend most of my time nowadays talking about longer, lower, slacker geometry, and the latest e bike guaranteed to take you further. <laughs> but downhill bikes are my first love, and this test session is by far the highlight of my year. Dennis Yuroshek is a New Jersey native and Mountain Creek local who has a long career of smashing downhill bikes up and down the East Coast. A competitive racer at heart and the only one of us who currently owns a downhill bike, Dennis knows a lot about setting up a fast race bike. He also lives by the motto, Jim Tan Laundry. You know you're local when you're on the cover. You're local on the trail. trail maps. Yeah. Our other two testers are Willem Cooper and Alf Garcia. Are you literally Speedy Gonzalez? <laughs> Garcia. Garcia? Sorry. <laughs> that was racist. <laughs> Willem is a staple in the East Coast scene who spent years traveling the U.S. racing and operating his team, Von Cooper Racing. With the U.S. national downhill title to his name, the Rhode Island native is now a full-time enduro coach who races just about every weekend during the summer. And Alf grew up in the golden era of USDH, when Norbert Nationals were popping off and rode for teams like Sobey Cannondale during his pro career. After transitioning into the white collar workforce like most of us do, Alf has raced select urban events down in Mexico over the years. A ripping rider with impressive finesse on a bike, he also brings a wealth of downhill bike knowledge. Between the four of us, the one similarity we all share is that it has been years since we lined up at a US national. With only two laps to figure out which bikes we would race, everyone's nerves were running high heading into the weekend.
Ryan Field Jedi 29. Uh, initial impressions, actually really surprised. So just looking at these, these puppies yesterday when we unpacked them from the shop, um, I thought this one was gonna be slow and uh, slow handling and a little more sluggish because of the high idler design. But I think that just kind of looking at the numbers and the geometry, what helps it a lot is a shorter chain stay. So I was pleasantly surprised popping off lips. Uh, and actually it turns super well. We got the Propane Rage CF. So it's a size large, it, it kind of fits more like a medium large. So it, it is a little tight. Um, it rides more like a big park bike rather than a, a full on like DH race bike. Uh, super lively. Um, it goes wherever you want to put it. If you want to slash a turn, you'll slash it. Uh, very very predictable like as soon as I got on it I felt right at home um, so really no complaints until we get to the rocks I just felt like it just kind of bounced around a little bit too much um, big hollow tubes on this definitely echo quite a bit uh, but the frame is super stiff overall I dig it like it's definitely a really fun bike all right, so I'm just putting my grips and, and pedals on this bike after riding the Mondraker. It's the first time really sitting on it. And the cockpit feels really short, but the most notable thing is that the seat is slam, but it feels really high. Like, I don't know, it just feels like the whole bike feels high up at me. Um, and it's much shorter than the Mondraker, which is interesting because that has the forward geometry and the basically the stems right on top of the steer tube. So I gotta roll these bars back a little bit and reset the cockpit up, but it just feels, it's funny how different each bike feels even though they're all for the same discipline. <clears throat> bike two of four, doing the same two laps we did the first time. So like a flow trail and then a techie trail. And then we'll get down to the bottom and switch all over again. And I feel like after this bike, and then we get like on the third, we'll probably all start like have an idea of what we're like trending towards. Yeah, I agree. Cause like you're saying, you're like, I got that, I got that downhill bike stoke. All right. So. This thing definitely feels like a World Cup race bike. I never raced a World Cup, but if I did, this is probably a pretty good option. Uh, it just felt like it wanted to go forward and keep its momentum and just uh, just keep its speed. Yeah, for me, bike number two, the Nuke Proof, um, complete, I don't wanna say complete opposite, but very different from the Canfield. Um, very progressive feeling suspension, um, it's pretty high on its travel, like that's what I feel. Um, but more precise, but I still felt like it handled really well in the rocks. Um, we'll see how it does in the next couple of runs, but I felt progressively better on the bike as I rode it down on the first run, so I'm stoked to try more. Field. I was the most skeptical to ride this bike and 
after only doing two runs, I feel like it kind of surprised me. It's a lot more like lively than I thought it would be. It kind of looked like it was just gonna be a dog to like get through things, but it's a lot more maneuverable than I expected. And it's hard to say if it'll be like a bike I'd wanna race. I think it's really fun to ride and it's super smooth, especially riding with flat pedals. Like with feedback through my feet, it was a lot smoother than like the Nuke Proof. The Nuke Proof felt like it kind of hung up a little bit more where this thing seemed to kind of push through square edge hits, but I don't know. I can't really call it. I'm interested to ride the Mondrager because everyone seems to like that so far. So I'm riding that in the, or yeah, I'm riding that next. So we'll see how she goes. It's also super loud. Like the propane's loud, but this thing has like no chain protection at all. Like between bottom and top, like it sounds like you're riding in 2007. It's sick. So I think my impression of it changed like towards the end of the two runs. Um, it's definitely more more of a bike that sits up in travel. Um, definitely feels like it gets hung up more, but that's comparing it to the Canfield, which I rode earlier today. So um, definitely two different types of suspension. Uh, can't really weigh too heavy on that, um, but it's a good all around downhill bike for sure. Uh, I just finished riding the Propane and it surprised me in a lot of ways. I was pretty excited to ride this bike and it's really playful and fun on jump trails but anytime I got rough uh, or you kind of just had to you know drop the heels and, and smash stuff it was really sketchy to me <laughs> it just feels very twitchy uh, and I had a hard time getting good front end feel and then on Alpine the, the trail with the wall rides there's a lot of braking bumps in there and this bike just felt like I felt every Bikes single bump cool. it felt very rough i feel like if i needed to i could tune the suspension a bit more and get it to feel better but if i were to say would i race this one i don't think this would be the one that i would choose if i were just sending bike park scrubs and whips and things i it was really playful in the air but i don't know if it's the the fastest bike or the bike i would feel most comfortable on i just did two laps on the mondraker summon r and uh i like I said before, I, I've ridden this bike and I, I actually really enjoy it. Uh, it feels like it really carries its speed through all the chunk and, and the rock. Very predictable, uh, it's really stable. It's got a nice long wheelbase and I feel very comfortable it, in the middle of the bike in the cockpit. Um, the really short stem is definitely interesting in the parking lot. It feels very light um, and it also kind of translates into the trail, but it, it rides really well. Um, it's kind of hard to explain. Uh, I, I really haven't ridden anything that short. So um, the tires, the Michelin tires, definitely stiff. You can like really ride these tires like super hard. And uh, I think maybe I, I I'll bump rim like once. I, I really like it. I'll give it like a an eight seven. So yeah. <laughs> All right, propane. I would say it's the bike so far that everybody has some issues with. And it, it's kind of interesting because it's running the same Boxer Ultimate as the Nuke Proof. But the feedback through my hands was like night and day compared to the Nuke Proof. Um, and I think part of that is like my, this bike's small for me. It's a little bit too small for me, but the where my body was was surprisingly like back. And it felt like my front wheel was like getting away from me. And it felt like, instead of like I was keeping weight on it, the fork was like kind of dancing away. And then the frame has a decent amount of play in it, but not like play, but like there's a little bit of flex. Like the, like the seat stay, the chain stay, that whole rear swing arm is long enough that I think it's like, there's just get a little bit of flex. And like the last, like the trailways row is mostly flowing the last rock cart and the whole bike is like, I'm doing turns when I'm trying to go straight. Like the bike's like dancing a lot. But other than that, like the 
the rear suspension's pretty progressive on this and it feels like it. Like in really big hits, there's one spot where we like drop into a corner and the bike just like rode through it. Like I didn't even like compress and then, but on like kind of small chatter, like the bike starts to kind of fade, not where I want it to go, but I don't know. It seems like if I was more comfortable jumping it, it would probably jump really sweet because it's super poppy. Like it felt like the cane feel, like it was just like super like, wanted to kind of catch air where the cane field almost like kind of wanted to kick me, which isn't sick, but I'll be curious on like the, the more rocky trail, how it goes this time. How about over here? Yeah, the Mondraker carbon, first carbon bike for me of the day. Rode well, unique geometry, definitely unique from the first two bikes that I rode. Um, I like it, definitely downhill race oriented. Um, even with the build spec that this one has, like it still does really well um, with the Fox performance um, in terms of like absorbing jump or bumps and all that. Um, definitely feels like it wants to accelerate in corners and in the rocks. And it was very composed in the uh, this last section of the Rocky uh, the Rocky Trail we did. So, what do you think of those tires compared to the other Michelin ones? Um, <coughs> very. The other ones you and I both were like they're kind of rolling. We start to really yeah, push, like more the knobs than the tire, but for sure, I think I think I felt more comfortable on these because just because of that that factor that you know that you mentioned. Uh, the other one has really tall knobs, and it feels like they're almost more square. Um, so it, <coughs> it might be because of the tires. The tires are really, really important. Rocks. Absolutely, just got worked <laughs> by this can field. Uh, it was, it just felt like it was very stink bug, um, and I think it might be because we have too heavy of a spring. But I'm the heaviest rider of all four of us, and I just couldn't get it to like settle in for the some of the turns. Uh, I was on the brakes a lot in the turns because I just didn't feel any kind of confidence in it um through the rocks I, I just felt like the rocks really ate up the dorado and uh i just i did not have a good time like my body hurts right now i mean it, it was the first aluminum bike of the test that i've been riding so i'll be curious to see if the new crew feels the same but uh definitely felt a little top heavy and um just a little more sluggish, like out of the turns, I was cranking pedals out of the turns and I wasn't doing that on the Mondraker or the Propane, so. Um, again, it could just be all about the spring and uh, I think we should definitely try a lighter weight spring and just see if that makes any kind of a difference. So, um, as of right now, you can't totally write it off, but um, yeah, I think we should definitely go back to the drawing board and see if we can figure it out. You're not facing it. It's interesting that you <clears throat> had felt like the rear end was too stiff. Yeah. Cause I felt like my bottom bracket just wasn't like settling. Yeah. Which is like the same feeling, but it didn't really bother me. It felt sketchy on jumps. Like when I would go to hit jumps, it was just like the bike was already into me yeah. way quicker than I wanted yeah, it to be. Yeah, same with me. It my foot off. Yeah, exactly. But. Which is not very common. But what's weird is it. it jump, I know. So. What's weird is it felt balanced. Like that bike I think fit like how I sit on a bike a lot better than like definitely the pro yeah, yeah. but I need some use of that. Boy. <laughs> so the one thing I noticed right away on this bike is that when I jumped on it, I, I felt right at home. I was nice and centered on the bike, right where I wanted to be. Uh, it corners really well. I like a bike to feel even as you're you know pushing into a corner. Uh, and this seemed to do that. It seemed to kind of keep you centered on the bike. The one thing I'd want to do is either add a volume reducer or maybe slide the fork down in the down a little bit just because the the front end felt like it was stink bug a little bit or it just was diving a little and I couldn't kind of chase it with damping 
uh, and my sag was appropriate. I could race this bike. It wouldn't be my first choice right now, but I could race it if I were able to fine tune some stuff, adjust the suspension, make the brakes throw a little different. So really overall, I, I was pleasantly surprised with this bike. I thought it rode really well. Yeah, the Mondrecker. So after two laps on it, um, I really am impressed by the, the racing oriented geometry and suspension. Um, even with uh, the Fox performance level uh, shock and fork, I think it still did an excellent job of sticking, sticking to the ground and kind of generating speed through the rocks and all that. Um, as far as like, am I gonna race this bike? Probably not, because um, it's a little bit smaller than, than I might be comfortable on going at race pace. But other than that, it's, it's pretty sweet. Propane was had the most feedback of all the bikes ridden today. It's not the most comfortable bike to ride. I'd be curious, like, riding it maybe a little bit softer to try to add some small bump compliance. And I think on, like, even just, like, on jump trails, I think this bike <clears throat> really fun. But I don't know. It's, like, a hair too small for me. We have a longer stem, which if I were to end up racing it, I would definitely put on. And try to... The weird thing is that even though the reach and the cockpit felt a little tight, um, I felt like I was pretty rearward on this bike. And it wouldn't be my first choice to race. We'll see what happens. I think I'm getting stuck with the Jedi. Because nobody <laughs> nobody else wants in. It. Like, it'd be pretty cool to beat them on it. So, that'd be what happens. We're on our last bikes for the day. laps on the Jedi like first turn I hit I was actually really surprised the damping on this bike is really good like I've always liked the Dorado's damper haven't ridden one of these shocks yet but overall I was really impressed the biggest thing I noticed it doesn't really carry speed quite as well like when you pump on a flow trail it kind of loses a little bit of momentum so I had to throw a pedal stroke in where I didn't on the other bike and then uh, smashing the tech stuff actually felt confident like I could really give it and didn't find the end of the bike, like where where I felt like the bike was getting sketchy. Felt very planted, went where I wanted it to. Confidence inspiring. If I were to race this bike, I would definitely play with the spring right in the rear. Was a little oversprung. I'd say out of all the bikes, like this is number two on my list right now. Mondrager's number one, this is number two. So uh, I just got done riding a new proof. Um, it felt very balanced, even though this is a XL. I'm five foot 10 but I still felt like I, I rode uh, pretty centered in the bike. Um, if, if I were to race it, I'd probably put a shorter stem on here. And if I were to own it, I would change out the handlebars. There's just a lot of back sweep. Um, for this bike being spec X01, uh, it comes with code R brakes. It's kind of a, a letdown. Uh, there's just a, a ton of throw before it actually hits. So uh, just, nuking into rocks and trees and stuff like man you want those brakes to slow you down so overall pretty impressed this is probably the closest thing to a race bike like this and the mondraker are very very close to like out of the box race bikes the rage i was kind of surprised by it actually i you know after a lot of the comments that have been going on today i, I kind of like just wrote it with an open mind and um i like it i honestly do the suspension um, it sits pretty high up in the suspension, but that causes it to have a pretty lively feel. Um, you know, the final question, of course, is, is would I race it? Um, if it was an extra large, I probably would, to be honest. Um, it felt a little bit cramped for, for, my, for my size. Um, but other than that, bike rips, man. I like it. Mondraker. Only mullet in the mix, and I honestly couldn't tell a huge difference. I felt like this bike felt good. It felt like the nuke proof. It's planted. 
It's really fast. It's very, makes you want to push harder and ride faster. Um, I didn't actually notice the short stem being too weird, but this bike, it, it was kind of weird. Like, I don't know if I need to mess around with suspension more if it's the bike I were to end up racing, but trying to like bunny hop and move the bike, it felt long, like rear end long, almost like my rebound was too slow and it was like kind of catching and throwing me forward. But I mean, overall, I would say this bike is definitely up there for bikes that I would consider racing. I still might put a longer stem on just for cockpit room, but um, tires felt really sick. It's super quiet. It feels like very tight and brand new, which some of these other bikes are still being brand new, honestly, are a little bit clankier than I might've expected. So um, I don't think it's what I'll race. I think I'll probably give it up to somebody else and try to go faster on one of the other bikes. Here's the defining moment of the video. It is. Because it'll decide who's gonna win or not. <laughs> oh, it's only who's the gonna bike. get the bike that they're the most stoked on. Because somebody I feel like is gonna end up with a bike they're not super stoked on. Did we all rank what we want one through four? Yeah. Yes. You go. That's why me. I don't know. You don't say anything. So my pick for racing on Sunday is the Nuke Proof, and the reason for that is because it fits me best. My top picks to be the Canefield. I think that bike surprised me the most, but it fits me good and. I think I can get it adjusted to go fast. Uh, I like the Mondraker the most. It was the most confidence inspiring and really felt like I could actually push it with real minimal amount of setup. So I think you, there's a lot more to be had with that bike. <sighs> What's your pick? Do me dirty, it's fine, Dennis. Mondraker. <laughs> Mondraker. Why do, you want, why do you want the Mondraker? That is the most World Cup inspired bike out of the whole group. Yep. That's the fair fastest bike in my opinion. All right, how do you want to do this? You want to rush it about it? It's a little anticlimactic, but. So my only problem, <laughs> straight up, <laughs> is I'm not going to race the propane. <laughs> I'm not going to race that bike. I Bro, actually, like, I'm dropping that. <laughs> no, like, seriously, if I tried to race that bike, I would hurt myself. <laughs> really? Yeah, I felt super dangerous on that bike. Hmm. If I tried to let go at all, that bike just felt so unpredictable to me, and I, I, I like almost crashed the whole run. It's okay, you can do me dirty. It's fine, I'll make it work, and I'll get it last, it's whatever. So the Mondraker and I, we do have a little special thing. We were on the cover of Decline Magazine, so <laughs> I do have Well, that. give me my yeah. opportunity yeah. for the cover of the trail map. <laughs> <laughs> you already got two covers, bro. <laughs> I say you guys just rush out, then we make a deciding call. Unless you want to be so generous to give Will the Mondraker. What's your second pick? The Canfield. My third pick is the Propane. What's your second pick? The new proof? proof. So well, this isn't my problem. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what? I'll ride the Propane. My and, man. And I'm going to beat Will. That's fine. Dude, I like this. I'll even I help like you it. get that thing set up. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need to get anything set up. I'll ride it just like that and I'll beat you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's fine. Like, Look how serious he looks. You know, you want to fight? I believe him. Like, I will for sure. Time down. I don't, I don't doubt it. Uh, well, let's go racing. Let's do yeah. it. Stoked. I owe you a hug. Let's, let's see, just see who would win it. In the next episode of Vital's DH test session, the misfortunes start to stack up. Number 69, baby. We're doing it for Dale. Weather's supposed to be nice know, for four to six, so <laughs> if I were you guys, Thank you. you'll You're find like maybe a seat at the beer garden. Yeah, one and done. Not doing the 69 any justice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.